Ciao, buongiorno and welcome back to Italy. I am here in Palermo, the capital of Sicily. And this is my first time on the island and I have actually been here for the last five or six days, I've lost count. I've been here with my family to celebrate my dad's 70th birthday. I will talk a little bit about Palermo as I make this video but this is just a short tour of the city as I've gotten to know it fairly well and I thought I would give you a taste of what Sicily is like. It's very atmospheric and I've really enjoyed my time here so far. It feels a little bit like Naples but I'll get more into that later. Some of Palermo's main roads and arteries can be very busy and noisy, even here on a Saturday morning. But I'm heading towards one of the city's most interesting and exciting markets here, which I believe shuts down around 12 noon. So make sure you catch it in the morning. And as I make my way there, I will pass through some of these uh, narrow streets with washing overhanging with a lot of character. As with many places in Italy, walking through Palermo's back streets feels like you're passing through a living museum, perhaps slightly grittier than the northern cities of Florence and Milan, but it retains this incredible a vibrancy which I hope to portray to you that I've seen in the last five or six days. So I've now entered into Mercato di Ballaro, which might be one of my favorite spots in all of Palermo that I've discovered over the last few days. It is a very exciting and colorful market, full of locals, but also tourists. It has a very nice blend and you'll find everything here from vegetables and the local produce, which grows in this very rich, fertile region. On the south of the island is Etna, Europe's most active volcano. Peeling off the market are tight and very picturesque alleys. The amazing base for all the pizzas and pastas comes from the fresh tomatoes. Pomodoro salsa even says here. Here we have fresh baked ricotta from Corleone, which is the town of the Godfather. As you pass through this market, you really get a feeling that Palermo is a city that's kind of a, a crossroads. If you look on a map, as the crow flies, we're about the same distance from Tunis as we are from Naples. And that just shows its proximity between the two continents and how that has affected its culture, its food, and the people and the way of life here. The influence from the Arabs, and the Normans from the north. So it's a fascinating blend and one that you don't necessarily get in other parts of Italy. Sicilian sweets and pastacherias are a big deal. Here we have marzipan shaped like different fruits, among other biscuits and snacks. Take a look here at the size of the zucchini. It is enormous. Oh, 
lots of fresh seafood being cut, tuna and swordfish. Fresh orange juice here for just one euro. There's also pomegranate juice too. So let's keep on moving through the market. Here we have Aaron Chino. So I'm about to try the famous Sicilian arancina, which is uh, a fried ball and it usually contains either ham, cheese, or this one is al ragu with some sort of meat and it sometimes has rice inside. But let's try it and uh, these are quite filling, I've had one before. Mm. I love the guy working here, he's absolutely bonkers. Three euros for arancini. But you don't necessarily have to pay that much. This might be a little bit more than if you were to find it at a more local place and not the main market that tourists walk down. Like many of the street foods in Palermo, it is deep fried. Kind of similar to Naples, they have deep fried pasta and they like to deep fry a lot of fish too. And I actually did a street food tour on my second day. I did it through Airbnb experiences. It was a lot of fun. We ended up eating some interesting stuff. One of which was a spleen sandwich. And I think I was the only one out of about nine people who actually finished the sandwich. It wasn't the best. It was kind of a salty, rubbery sandwich with not much sauce. I didn't film the street food tour as I just kind of wanted to enjoy it when I was here with my family, but I had a lot of fun and I recommend if you have a chance to then try to take part in a street food tour while here in Palermo. Walking down these back streets to the next place and this is where you get the real feeling of Palermo with the washing hanging and motorbikes buzzing past. I am now here by the Royal Palace or Norman Palace, which is the home of the Sicilian Parliament and the building dates back to around the 9th century. But what's more than just royal apartments and nice rooms is the Palatine Chapel, which is kind of a not to be missed thing in my opinion here in Palermo. It costs 19 euros to enter, which is kind of expensive. But when you see these B-roll shots that I'm currently showing, you'll understand why. It is spectacular. The mosaics and the gold and the opulence is really breathtaking. And what's more, I had no idea this place existed until I did my research about Palermo and things to see and do, which makes it all the more underrated. Maybe some of you have heard of it before, but I was certainly really impressed by what I saw walking inside there. So pretty much just a stone's throw away across the other side of the gardens from the Royal Palace is the Cathedral of Palermo, the main cathedral, and it's iconic for its Arab Norman architecture. A few days ago, I went up to the top. You can pay a few euros to get great views of the tiled rooftops of Palermo and see the old buildings from high above and even glimpses of the sea in the distance too and standing up close to it a lot like the royal palace it's pretty evident that this is a unique type of architecture you won't find this really in many other places in italy and that's why this cathedral along with the one in monreal and cefalu make up a unesco world heritage site now mentioning cefalu I went there for a day trip. It is worth going to from Palermo. It's one of the most beautiful towns 
on this side of the island and it only takes around one hour on the train from Palermo Centrale and it costs about six euros for a ticket. The trains run early and they also come back fairly late. I think the last one is about quarter past ten, but double check of course. Cefalu itself is a very pretty town by the sea if you want a nice day out. And as I mentioned, a cathedral similar to this one. You can go up to the top of the tower and get some views as well from the cathedral in Cefalu. It's a small town, a lot smaller than Palermo, but it's very relaxing and it makes for a nice escape from the larger city. And it has that little bit of history too, which makes it more than just a sort of seaside uh, destination. So it is now the late afternoon here in Palermo and I'm planning to just look around a little bit more, show you some of the main streets. Right here we have the four corners known as the Quattro Canti and it's basically a square with four Baroque fountains and it connects some of the main streets all together. I'm not sure if I quite get the crane in the middle here which I think ruins it a bit. Maybe this is like some temporary art exhibition or something like that. I'm not quite sure. I need to read the sign, but it is a really grand part of Palermo, a very historical one that has connected the most important roads of the city for a long time. Just tons of Baroque lined piazzas with various churches and just like anywhere in Italy when you wander around there is just so much of interest to look at and explore there's probably not enough time to check out all of the grand churches and museums and galleries etc <laughs> So the latter half of the Via Makeda after the Four Corners comes alive particularly during the spritz hour and onwards into the night and it's full of gels. it's full of bars and places to grab drinks at reasonable deals and prices with atmospheric buildings that are old and tall on either side. So one more area that I want to show in this video that I'm entering into now is called La Vucheria, which is one of the most historic parts of Palermo and it has many stories and portrayals including here the iconic painting of the narrow market street that is full of shadows with tall buildings on either side. Today of course it's all changed but you can imagine all of these were vegetable stalls and things like that as we saw this morning but people would come through here and la vucheria literally translates to the butchery because it had meat but also because of the history of the mafia down this street as you may be aware palermo has a long and fairly dark history with the Sicilian Mafia and on our street food tour our tour guide who was around probably I would say about 40 years old 
said that when he was eight years old, he would be afraid to walk down the street and his mom and dad even told him not to do so because it wasn't safe because he heard all the stories and things. At night time, this whole area becomes a bit of a hub for drinking and things like that. But now it's a very cool area to check out. Let me show you the vibe here on a Saturday evening. There are still a few market stalls left today. This is one of my favorite parts of Palermo that I have seen so far. And this particular square, I love how it just opens up here with a lot of street food and places to sit down in a very cool area. La Vucheria has always been down below Via Roma, one of the main streets. And it still retains that exciting feeling. It gets really, really busy a bit later on here. All these tables will be packed with people. So that's all for this very brief tour of Palermo. Just thought I would show it a little bit in the day or so free that I had before flying back to the UK. I'm now here in Catania, by the way, which is the second largest city in Sicily. I took a train from Palermo Centrale to Catania Centrale. It takes around three hours and it only costs just under seven euros. And I am flying back to the UK tomorrow. I don't have time to cover more of Sicily or to shoot any videos here in Catania, unfortunately, which is a bit of a shame. Mount Etna is just behind me and I got some good views of it on the train coming into Catania. You can see here from my phone videos, which I will put on my Instagram stories, Europe's most active volcano. In fact, it was spewing lava just a few days ago, so it's not really doable in terms of hiking right now anyway, but it's something I would love to come back and do and get up close to the volcano and do day trips to Syracuse Taormina or the ruins near Agrigento. In the north there is San Vito and also the small town of Corleone which is famous from the Godfather. There is a lot more here in Sicily than I have just briefly obviously shown in this video. Only Palermo which I really like by the way. Palermo has a great atmosphere. One more thing I didn't mention in the video which I did see is the Massimo Theatre. If you can catch a performance there, make sure you do it. It is the largest theatre or opera house in all of Italy and it is very impressive though I did not go inside, I only saw it from the exterior. So I'm going back to the UK for just a couple of weeks. By the time you're watching this video, I will already be on my way to my next country in an entirely different part of the world. So stay tuned, that video will follow this one very shortly and I will see you then. Cheers.